Hi everybody. So we've got a brand new how-to video for you today. So the feedback I had from most of you was that you loved the how-to videos. Um, so I'm still going to make a card, but I'm going to show you today how to do the letterpress technique. So letter pressing is basically where we use ink and an embossing folder to create different effects. Um, it's just it isn't it's a fabulous technique. It's really easy to do, and it just gives you another way of using all your gorgeous embossing folders. So I've got here a selection of my eight by eight embossing folders. Um, so I'm going to choose, it doesn't really matter which ones you do. I will just give you a few tips before we start. So for example, let's just find one that's a little bit more, oh, that is the most open one. So here on the left, I've got my double diamonds. So the double diamonds embossing folder will be amazing for this technique. Uh, I'm going to, I'll use this one for one of the examples. So what happens is where you've got lots of embossed areas, i.e. like the Double Diamonds has, you, you're going to get a fabulous effect if you do it where you colour the embossed areas as opposed to the other way around. And then when you've got embossing folders that have more open areas, let me just move these out of the way. Where you've got embossing folders that have more open areas, like the Mistletoe Kisses one here, yeah, this one's going to look amazing if you do it in reverse. So when you ink on the smooth side, so if you ink on the smooth side, it means all these gaps will be coloured with ink. So whichever colour ink you use. Um, and then the raised areas, which are the coloured areas on the folder, they're going to stay white. So this is what I would, I would personally do. Obviously, you can do whatever you want. Once you know the technique, you can the world's your oyster, you can just absolutely go for it. So I'm going to show you a couple of different techniques. And I've got lots and lots of 8x8 eight eight embossing folders. I think there's about 12 or 13 now. And all of my embossing folders, in case you haven't used them before, if you're new to my embossing folders, these are not 3D embossing folders. However, they are thicker the normal embossing folders. If I just show you, look, these are, oops, let me come a little bit further away, let the camera catch up. My regular, and I call, I say regular in the loosest sense of the word, but my regular embossing folders are almost the same effects that you would get from a 3D embossing folder. And that's because when I was sourcing them, I wanted them a little bit thicker. So the manufacturers who made these for me were very patient <laughs> and I had lots and lots of different samples until we got to the right thickness of plastic um, and it's now absolutely spot on. So there are lots and lots, like I say, in the embossing folder collection. I'll, in fact, I'm going to show you. I'll just spend a second to show you. I'll do two piles. So we've got regular ones, everyday ones, and then we've got the festive ones. So Double Diamonds is absolutely one that I would recommend to you. It's absolutely stunning. And it's great for guys' cards as well. So you know when you struggle for backgrounds for the more masculine style cards? Uh, this one's perfect because it means you can do your browns and your blues or whatever colours you like for them. So double diamonds and then we've got the mistletoe one here. And those of you that know me will know that I absolutely love mistletoe for Christmas cards. Absolutely love it. So you've got the mistletoe there. You've then got the beaded scallops, which is obviously a very, very pretty one. So you imagine this one done with all those raised areas in your favourite colour of ink pad. It will look phenomenal. And then we've got the poinsettia. So the poinsettia flourish, which is another one of my Christmas favourites. Because as you know, I like floral elements on my cards. And most of you will know that the poinsettia that's featured within the embossing folder is also the same shape as my dies. Then we've got the snowflakes, snowflake splendour. Again, coordinates with my dies. Then we have the falling snow. And falling snow is one of those that I've, I've, I didn't really need to call it falling snow, although that is what it is. But it also, it can go on either pile because you can use this just as a like a dotty background. But we'll put it with the Christmas. And then this is one of my all time favorites, the Holly Flourish. This looks amazing, whether you do it just in normal cardstock, mirror card, 
my luster card or whether you use the letterpress technique on it. Then we've got the classic flourish, which is gorgeous as well. I'm going to show you that one today. Then we've got this one, which is quintessentially quilted. And this is another really useful one to have where you don't want fancy, too much fancy in the background. So that's a regular one. And then we have the heart lattice. So you've got the little hearts on the lattice shape there. And then we've got two little seven by five embossing folders. These are the only two seven by fives that I've done. And that's because these were, these were part of my compendium box kit that we did. Um, you can now buy these individually and the, again, these are going to coordinate with my butterfly dies and most of my butterfly stamps. And this is definitely going to coordinate with my flourish, my flourish dies. And again, with some stamps that I've done. So let's put these to one side. I'm going to do the ones that are heavier today. So we'll do these. So a couple of little tips for you. Let me just put these back on my shelf where they belong. <clears throat> couple of little points to note for you. So cardstock, it doesn't really matter which cardstock you use for this technique. I'm using my regular pure white cardstock. These are just scraps because I'm obviously not going to do a full sheet just to show you how to do it. So these are scraps from my matting and layering for the card I'm going to make today. And this is my, uh, as I say, my premium pure white cardstock. You can use, um, I would use a good quality card for this rather than one of the, th the thin ones. If you do it with the thin ones, because my folders are a little bit thicker, it could, it could cut through them. Whereas I know it won't with these. So these are what we're going to do today. And next thing that is essential for this is a brayer. So... For those of you that don't know, when I was sourcing brayers, because there are quite a few different brayers on the market, um, you've got the you've got the soft one with the uh, what do you call that one, the speedball brayer with the soft brown beigey rubber, uh, and then you've got some that are red rubber, and I opted for the red rubber one, and the reason I opted for red rubber is because it's harder, and because I like to do this technique. And because I like to have more control with my brayer, the hard red rubber is, is I think, a better choice. When you're not doing brayering techniques, uh, like soft blended backgrounds, I think this is perfect. So I've got two here. <laughs> Those of you that follow me will know that I, this is my, this is what I call my mucky brayer. And I keep this one for all my textury style backgrounds and everything if you look it's got bits of glitter and all sorts stuck in it so this is not the right one for this you need a nice clean brayer i mean i'm fortunate i've got about 12 of these so i'm gonna ju i just wanted to give you that tip so i do a four inch brayer and i also do a six inch brayer let me just grab it to show you so if you're new to doing this here we go, look, four inch and a six inch. If you're new to doing this, it's, um, it's probably easier to do it with the four inch one. However, the six inch one is good for covering larger areas. You can see, look, you, you're gonna get that done in a couple, of, a couple of swipes. But I'm gonna use the four inch one today. So bits of kit. So essentially, all you need to, to do this technique is a brayer, an embossing folder, a die cutting machine and I've got my Big Shot Pro on the floor here because I, I didn't want to put my Gemini on here but my Big Shot Pro will go on here and this technique works with any machine as long as you can run any embossing folders through your machine this will work and then inks so I've specifically chosen today Distress Oxides simply because we will get a lovely watery background um and they won't stain your they won't stain your embossing folders you can use you can use any ink in them to be quite honest but i, I like the versifying clairs most of you know that i love the versifying clairs but versifying clairs will stain your embossing folders and for somebody like me i can't cope with that <laughs> i like to keep them nice and clean but it, it won't tarnish them so, but it will stain them so if, if you want to use your versifying clairs for stronger ink colors absolutely go for it but just remember it will stain it will stain your embossing folder 
and I'm going to show you a couple, two or three different ways today. I am going to make a card as well. So I've got a card all prepped, look. So I will do my background for this card with this. Because I want to show you sometimes it's nice to just have the the embossed effect as your main feature background and that's what we're going to do today i'm going to use the hearts one today i think so i'll pop that to one side and we will start with one of, i'm going to start with the double diamonds because the double diamonds is the one that i told you i think is absolutely stunning so we'll do the double diamonds with the colored part of the embossing folder with the ink so just as a point of, of reference for you, just so you know that the, the um, on my embossing folders, the coloured side, which is this side, is the, is the, uh, is the deboss side. I'm trying to explain this to you easily. So let me show you this way. So open it up. The bit at the bottom is the raised part of the embossing folder. So the raised part of the embossing folder is the, if you want these colours, if you want the colour to be where the where the embossing folder colour is, yeah? If you want it to be in the recessed areas, you do it on the smoother side. So you've got a raised side and you've got a smoother side. Smoother side is for the background of your embossing folder. Raised side is for the areas that are coloured on the, on the embossing folder. I hope I've explained that. <laughs> and look, I've made myself a coffee and drunk most of it before we started. So I'll just do, I'm gonna do two colors and I've chosen a couple of colors that I like together just because I, it's easier for me. And I've got here fossilized amber and I've got carved pumpkin. So I'm gonna do a two tone effect on this. You can absolutely do this in one color, but I'm doing a two tone effect. And I've not got massive bits of card. These, like I say, these are just off cut so I can show you. So I'm gonna do it on the raised side and this is where the brayer becomes essential. And you can absolutely, if you want, just rub your ink pads over the raised side. But by doing that, you run the risk of it going into areas where you don't want it. So I'm, I'm a little bit more of a neat freak. So I'm definitely going to use my brayer for this and I'll use the, and I want the colour to be where the colour is on the embossing folder. So let's just get some ink on this. So remember with Distress Oxides, because the Distress Oxides and indeed the regular Distress Inks, they are water-based. So what you're not going to get is solid sharp colours. You're going to get a lovely watery colour effect. Um, which is absolutely perfect. And you can see, look, as I, I'll bring this in in a second to show you. If I bring that in, get some white card behind it so you can see what I'm doing. There you go. Look, you can see the colour is starting to go on the raised bits. And this is why the brayer, I think, is better because I can keep adding the colour. I'll leave that there so you can see what I'm doing. That's better for you, isn't it? Look at that. So I'm going to keep adding colour a little bit at a time. It's better to do a little bit at a time. Remember to do this on a flat surface. It definitely needs to be on a flatter surface. I'm sorry for the banging with the brayer. If you're doing it on a flat surface, you've got less chance of the ink going in areas that you don't want it. You can go in both directions. Look to get lovely even coverage. In fact, these middle ones now look are covered so i won't worry too much about covering it perfectly because it's just to show you the technique really if you were doing this properly you would spend a little bit more time you would spend a little bit more time making sure you've got ink everywhere so that is the fossilized amber i'm just going to do another bit there remember the hard red rubber means you can press quite hard on the embossing folders because it won't go where we don't want it and by going in both directions we, we're hitting all the different points so that's enough of the fossilized amber i'm going to clean this color off actually no i won't i'll leave it i'll just leave it for quickness and i'm now moving on to the carved pumpkin oh yes you can see look with the with the distress oxides that we're getting this lovely watery two-tone effect 
So I'm not going to cover the fossilised amber. I just want little bits with the carved pumpkin. And most of you will know that carved pumpkin is my favourite orange from the Distress Oxide. I love it. And I'm going to bring that in to show you. Let me just clean that off because we're going to use that again. So it's really easy to clean your brayer. I'm using a wipe. You can click these out. You can click these out and run them under the tap if you want. Uh, and this is my clean brayer, so I am definitely cleaning all this ink off. So I'm just wiping it off with the wipe. And then another little tip for you for cleaning your brayers is to have a, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? <laughs> have a bit of kitchen roll at the side and then just rub, rub the ink off, look. So that is now clean. There is no more carved pumpkin or fossilised amber on that. There we go. And this is the fun part. So this is the bit that you, you need to remember. So I'm going to pop the card on that section. And I've more or less got that straight. So I'm really impressed with that. I'm going to close that up. I'm going to hold it in place. Well, I'll, no, I'll put it there and I'm just going to bring my machine up. So remember, just check, just check what the platforms are, what the plates are for on your uh, machine. I know with the Big Shot Pro that I only need one cutting plate and the rest of the platforms. I, that, I know that already because I've done this before. So I'm just going to pop that on and run that through. I'm going to show you with the other embossing folder in reverse as well. So I'll just run this through. Sorry if the camera's rattling, but I, there's the machine moving my desk. <laughs> so if you feel seasick afterwards, don't blame me. <laughs> so let's just move that out of the way. And pop that on the floor. Let's move to the next one. And now I can show you how this are you ready i can show you how this looks so you can see before i move it look you can see look where we've got little splats from the from the carved pumpkin because i didn't cover it and this is the effect you get so what we've got here look is the d that's just stunning we've got the debossed because that's the embossed look we've got the debossed side of the embossing folder with the color in isn't that just fabulous? It's a completely different look. So all the all the in between areas are are pure white still, and we've just got colour in the debossed areas of the of the cardstock. And look how different it looks. So that's the regular. How fab is that? How fabulous is that? So that is that's one way. Let's just clean the ink off this. And this is another reason why I prefer doing it with the Distress Oxide because this ink will just wipe straight off. In fact, it, it is. It's almost gone. And then we'll just get a bit of kitchen roll to dry that off. Don't need a full sheet of that. You can even run that under the tap and it will take all the ink off. This is why, I, I mean, I love I love the watery effect anyway, the two-tone effect from that is, is almost like textured. Um, if you didn't want that, then you would need to use a dye-based ink, such as the Versifying Clairs. But remember, Versifying Clairs will stain your embossing folders. So if you're not fussed about stained embossing folders, go with the Versifying Clair. So that is the double diamonds done on the raised side of the embossing folder. We're now going to do it in the other direction with a different folder. So let's just get a different folder. Where did I put them all? There they are. So let's go with the quintessentially quilted. And this time we're going to do it on the, uh, on the smoother side. So the smoother side is the background. So let's just move these out of the way. I love quintessentially quilted. I use it loads. And I'll do I'll do two tone again just because we can and I'll go with the lightest colour first. 
again with the brayer, so let's just see how much space I need. I'll do it this side so you can see what I'm doing. There we go, you can see the colour. So back with the brayer. In fact, shall I show you? No, I was, yeah, I will, I will, I will. So I'm going to rub this on. So we'll do, we'll get a slightly different um, effect this time. I'm rubbing this on. The problem with doing this is sometimes the ink can fall into the recessors. So I put the ink on like that. I'm going to bray that because I know that that will annoy me. So we'll just bray that off a little bit. So we've got enough colour on there now. And I can see by doing it that way, look, can you see we've got more of the, this is Twisted Cit uh, Citron, by the way. I love Twisted Citron and Uncharted Mariner together. They look, they look amazing. So by doing it that way, we've ended up with some areas that are thicker. Um, it, even if I go back in, look, it's just gonna add more ink. It's not giving you a fine coat. But it'll be fine. At least you'll see the difference now. And that's why I'm doing this video to give you the ideas and show you the techniques. So I do need to clean that off now before I put the other colour on. Because there's just too much twisted citron on there. So let's just wipe that off. The good thing about the oxides as well is they don't stain your uh, brayers. I'll leave that there to use for the next part. Let's just rub that colour off. And then we'll go in with the Uncharted Mariner. And Uncharted Mariner has quickly become one of my favourite colours. It's a beautiful, deep, almost petrol blue colour. So I am putting this on with the brayer, just so I've got a little bit more control. Oops. You can see it's quite a strong colour. So because I put the ink on flat, it's giving us some raised areas look. So we will end up with little dots in the middle of this, but that's fine. It's just a background technique. No need to panic. And this will show you that it's better to put it on with a brayer. Better to put it on with a brayer than it is to dab it on. Or personally, I think it is. Let's clean this off. And let's keep my stuff clean as much as I can. And it's it's just it's a bonus. It's a bit, letter press technique is a bit of a bonus for using your embossing folders because it's something that you can do. Oh, you've already bought the embossing folder because you thought it was pretty, um, and this is just a, an extra technique that you can do. So again, I'm going to pop the card on there. It's not straight. <laughs> But it won't matter it's just to show you it's just to show you so let's just wind that on and let's run that through the machine and get ready for the rocking on the camera i can't do it any softer than i am doing So you don't need to run this through twice, it's only because I'm putting it back to the side where I usually start, which is the right. You can see that already, look. Put that on the floor. And then we will have a look at this. Oh, that looks fab. Uh, honestly, it just looks fabulous. <laughs> So even though we've got the dots, so the, the circles in the middle of the raised bits are because we put the ink on direct. If we'd have done that with a brayer, it would have been much more even like this. But look at that technique. All the raised lines are still white. Isn't that fabulous? So it's like, so we've done it in reverse. So that's two different ways we've done We've done this tech, this technique now. So we've done the raised part 
and we've done the we've done the, so this is the raised part which goes into the recesses and then you've got the background done so the background there with the raised part left left clear fabulous Let's clean this my fingers will be green by the time we've done with this Look. so now i'm going to move on to another technique before i do my card so there's one more thing that i want to show you with this and it's that you can actually use your embossing powders and this is something if you followed me for a long time this is something i used to do a lot I used to do this a lot. Just get that ink out of there, because if I don't. So you might have seen me do this before, and I love my embossing powders, as you know. And this is not particularly neat, but it's an amazing effect. We basically use this embossing folder now in two different ways. These embossing folders, two different ways. So reset, so debossed, embossed has been done. And we're now going to use embossing folders on it. So let's get the, which one shall I do? Shall I do the, do you know what? I'm going to do, I'm going to do mine. Oh no, I'm not because I'm using different colours. So I'll use it with the classic flourish. We'll do it with the classic flourish. So this time we are going to, it's going to be the uh, debossed area. So remember the raised bit, the raised side is what goes into the debossed, which is what we want today. So we're going to get the pattern from this debossed, but with embossing powder on. So it's exactly the same technique that we've just been doing with ink pads. Only this time we're going to do it with um, we're going to do it with a Versa, a Versa mark. So you know you won't be able to see this going on, and this is the only tricky part. I've only got a small a small piece of card for this, and this won't be neat because I'm not going to spend ages doing it. But it gives you it gives you the idea, which is why I'm doing the how to video to give you ideas. So I would definitely recommend the Versa mark as opposed to the perfect medium for this because these are a little bit juicier. So I, I think this is this is better and we are brayering this on and it's really difficult for me to show you this because you can't really see any, well you can see that it's wet but you can't see that there's any colour. So before, I'll just do this as normal but you do need to use um, your anti-static bag on this. So remember I'm going on the raised parts and because Versamark is juicy, don't put any pressure on with the brayer. So I'm literally just putting the brayer on and letting it glide over. I'm not pressing it down at all. And then I'm just gonna go in the opposite direction. I used to do this all the time. Because I love embossing folders and I love the different techniques you can get from them. So that should be enough. We shall soon find out. So I'm going to recommend that you use your anti-static bag on this. Just pop these out of the way because I can show you again at the end. So I'm going to use the anti-static bag over this just to try and avoid the embossing powder going where I don't want it. And then we'll pop that in the middle and run that through the machine. I'm going to do that now before I clean my braid so that it doesn't start to dry. So the machine is back up. And we'll run this through. This is a fabulous technique and I'm going to do just I'll just do one color of embossing fold, uh, embossing powder. I've got two out but once you've got the technique you can do what you want basically. Colour, two colours, three, whatever you want. Pop that on the floor. Oops. That was, took a chunk out of the corner of my desk. No, it hasn't. I'm only kidding. So that is your normal embossing folder, look. 
So that's that's how the the classic flourish looks, just normal. But we've now got hopefully some Versafine uh, Versamark in the recesses of this embossing folder. So let's bring some em embossing powder in. And I was going to do two tone because you can you can once the once the ink is in there, you can do whatever colours you want. But I'll do I'll do totally turquoise just to show you. I, what I got was fabulously fabulous fuchsia and totally to look at look you can see what's going to happen to this oh this is just so clever put a bit more on just in case I've missed any bits that's fabulous put that back so we've now used the debossed area, the embossed area with Distress Oxide. If you don't like the watery effect, just use your Versafine Clear, but remember it will stain your, it will stain your folders. And I'm just going to get the, plug the heat gun in everybody, so bear with me a sec. And we will melt the embossing powder. So I'm just going to do this from above, it doesn't matter for this because it literally would just be a background. It looks amazing this. And what a fabulous effect to get from something that you've already got, an embossing folder. working my way around. Imagine this done with gold or silver. Oh, it looks gorgeous on the totally turquoise. Stop sides. Nearly done. And that will do nicely, thank you very much. I'm going to plug my camera back in. Most of you know I've got about 19 different sockets going on here. So what we've got now, look, is the... There you go, look. The glossy sheen from the embossing powder in the recessed, the debossed side of the embossing folder. Normal side, debossed side. And it's just, it's just fabulous. So let's just bring these back in because I need to get on with my card now. So we've got uh, Distress Oxides, rub, when you rub the ink onto the embossing folder, which is what this is, which is why we've got the raised bits, the dots, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. I would definitely, definitely do it with my brayer. So we've got the, em that's the embossed side of the card. That is the debossed side of the card. And that is the debossed side of the card. So if we wanted to, yeah, if we wanted to do this the other way around, flip it round and do it the other way around, same way we did this, you would use your Versamark again. And then all this, flat space in the background would be coloured it would look amazing so that's three different looks just from doing the letter press uh, letter press technique and you could do that with any embossing folder so i'm gonna now just do my let me just clean this because i know i didn't clean it if you've got gaps in uh because i did notice i got a few gaps in there it's just because i didn't put you didn't have enough versamark on so just just go on it again or just make sure you've got plenty on before you start. I'm not worried about that today because I'm literally just showing you the technique. And to be fair, I actually like it when you've got bits missing. It's almost like a bonus. It's almost like a bonus embossing folder because you're getting a different texture. 
So we're now going to do my card using this technique. So let's just put that to one side. And for this one, I'm going to use Kish Flamingo. I couldn't decide look, when I was prepping. I couldn't decide which colours to go for, but I'm going to go for Stormy Sky and Kitsch Flamingo. I was going to do Villainous Potion because I love these two together as well. <laughs> and I also love these two together. <laughs> too many choices. But I'm going to stick to I'm going to stick to these. So we're going to do the embossing folder on the raised side. So we're going to get debossed hearts and we're going to get um, we're going to get debossed hearts with the colour. Just clean the Versa mark off this before it gets too sticky. Isn't it fabulous? You know, you, I I love I love it when products do more, do more work harder for us as crafters. And it's fabulous having an embossing folder that you already love because I love this one. I love the I love the heart. I love them all. Well, I should do. I designed them. Um, but you know when you can get a bonus technique from something that you've already got. I just think it's amazing. So I'm just making sure this is dry. And it is. And personally, personally, I like the watery effect you get from distress oxides. If And I, I, I've said this to you already. If you don't like the patchiness of the distress oxides, I mean, why wouldn't you? But if you don't, you just need to do it with a dye-based ink rather than a water-based ink, such as your Versafine Clairs, and then you will get a solid, a complete solid block of colour. But I'm not doing that because I'm not going to stain. I'm not going to stain my lovely embossing folders. <laughs> so I'll pop that underneath. So you can see this is a bigger piece because this is what I'm using for my actual card. So... I'm going on with the lightest colour first, which is the Kitsch Flamingo. Both of these colours together are just are just beautiful. So we've got Kitsch Flamingo going on. It's a beautiful, beautiful pink. So if you like pink colours, you'll probably already know that Spun Sugar is a very pale, is a very pale pink. It's beautiful, but it's very pale. Kitsch Flamingo is a little bit stronger. So I'm just building up the layers of ink. Which This is why I think this way round, this way of doing it is better than rubbing the ink, than rubbing the ink on. And this is also why I had the red rubber brayers as opposed to the soft brayer. So you can see, look now, as I'm building the layers of ink up, it's starting to cover the hearts. And you won't get a solid. Can you see there, look? I can't, I'm not going to lift it up to show you, but uh, you, you can get as much or as little colour as you like on this. And I want lots of colour. Going in both directions just means you hit the brayer, uh, you hit the embossing folder at every point. So I'm quite happy with that. So let's get this pink off the brayer. <laughs> you can even see little hearts on the, on the brayer. <laughs> Lovely. So I take the pink off. I'm taking the pink off this time before I go into the stormy sky. Just because I don't want to make my stormy sky purple. Rub that off. Oops. Put the lid on, Phil, so you don't use that one in there. And now we're going to do some Stormy Sky areas. So Stormy Sky and Kitsch Flamingo, where it, where it overlaps a lot, we will get a lovely secondary colour of a purple shade. So... Making sure I've got plenty of ink on the brayer. And I'm just going to roll that over. Oh, already, I can see this is going to be pretty. I'm going both directions. And you know what? I'm not going to put any more. 
I'm not going to put any more Stormy Sky on. Let me just bring this in to show you because I could tell that that's going to be really pretty. We're going to get lovely watery effect hearts. So that's enough Stormy Sky. Take the ink off. The other bonus with the Distress Oxides is they stay, they stay wet for they stay wet for a while. And remember, after I've done this, I could put clear embossing powder over it. Just cleaning my brayer. Could put clear embossing powder over it and get a different look again. Right, so let's get this piece of card in. And because I am using this, I need to get it relatively relatively even I'm just looking where my hearts are that's it that will do it nicely thank you very much bring the machine back move my chair out of the way So it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether you've got an electric machine or whether you're doing it with a manual machine. As long as you can put embossing folders through it, it's absolutely fine. So both directions. And then I'll do the reveal for you in a second. I can already see it looks very pretty. Look, how pretty is that? Oh, that's just so gorgeous. So you can see somewhere I've not got as much ink on. Somewhere we've got more ink on. It looks amazing. I love that. What a fabulous background. I remember as well, you can even, you can still bray a, <clears throat> brayer over the top of your um, embossing folders just to get a different look again so if you want the raised bit I'll do it and show you just clean this so much you can do with embossing folders they're absolutely worth the weight in gold all the different techniques I mean I've just shown you four different techniques and I'm going to show you another one definitely seen me do before and that's lovely and clean which is fabulous for me I'm not, I don't want to knock all the colour off so if you want the colour on the top on the raised bit remember I mean you've seen me do this a hundred times you can still go over the top to add the colour like this and you can just keep going and keep going until you've got as much as you like on and that looks fabulous as well there's no no getting away from it this is the last time i'm cleaning this sprayer <laughs> i'll run it under the sink after we've finished i've never cleaned so much in all my life <laughs> So that's the brayer done. So we've got, you. so you can obviously go on the raised side, which is the normal embossed side, but that just looks something else because you can see it's debossed. And that is why they call it the letterpress technique because we're putting ink into raised or, or debossed areas. Right, so let's get on with this card. So I'll leave that to one side to dry. I've got a couple of bits, because there's no point me showing you a technique if I don't show you how it looks on a card. So I've got a few bits and bobs here that I've used today. We're going to colour the flowers with the inks. And I've used my shabby, 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 shabby blossoms. So these are the shabby blossoms flowers. And you know that the shabbies are one of my favourite, one of my favourite collections. And these all have the debossed lines in, as you can see. So we're going to colour these in the same two colours that we've used for the embossing folder. So shabby foliage is the leaves, shabby butterflies is the butterflies, 
shabby blossoms is the flowers. So it's all very shabby today. <laughs> and we're going to use the same two colours of Distress Ink and just colour them by, by wetting the flowers, by wetting the ink and dipping the flowers in them. And then we can pop that to one side to dry. This is why oxides are so good in my eyes. You've got links to everything in the description of the video. And I've not actually, I mean, most of you will know that I use loads and loads of flowers on my cards. It's my, it's my thing. But it's actually a long time since I've coloured my flowers in this way because I've been using my paints. So just some water. I'm going to get my tweezers for this. So rather than dipping my finger in, and we're going to do, a, I mean, that looks gorgeous in its own right. So we're going to do a two-tone. Let's just add a bit more purple to that. So when it starts to get grubby, just clean your ring. In fact, I'll do them all. I'll do them all in one colour first. And that just avoids the risk of too much contamination. This dries amazing because all the colour is falling into the recessed areas of my flowers. And it's just so easy to do. Do you see what I mean about Kitsch Flamingo? It's a beautiful pink. And the last one. Last one. And then we can start dipping in the in the stormy sky. So you can see looking at this look that where the two colours are overlapping. We're getting, we're getting a lovely lilac colour. Or like, it's almost like a bluebell, a bluebell colour. I don't want to cover all the pink up though, so don't put too much on Phil. Less is more. Less is more. Ah, oh, they're just so pretty. Just get a bit more on here. There we go. Bit more on there. They look, they look beautiful already. In fact, let's do the butterflies because we can. Because we can. And don't worry about it looking muddy. It will dry lilac, don't you worry. And the other good thing is you can go in with a bit more pink if you want to. But I know that they will dry beautiful. So let's pop those to one side and let those dry as long as we can before getting in the heat gun. So I'm just gonna pop those on some kitchen roll. I don't need that piece. I don't need it that big. Pop them on the kitchen roll and pop them in your splatter box or just pop them to one side. The longer you can leave these to dry naturally, as I'm sure you've heard me say, a hundred times the longer you leave them to dry naturally the better look at that lot fabulous so as ever i've left the leaves i've left the leaves plain white so let's just pop that over there and leave those to settle for a bit and we'll come to the next layer of this card <laughs> i think i was being a bit optimistic <laughs> I think I was being a bit optimistic with that piece of kitchen roll. <laughs> so let's get a bigger piece. So this layer is going to go underneath the embossing folder layer. Yeah, and I've purposefully made the layer a little bit bigger than I normally do for my matting and layering. So this, this piece here is a six by six, and this is a six and a half. And I'm going to go around with my sparkly squiggly rubber background stamp so spark spark i can't even say it sparkly squiggly who names these things <laughs> sparkly squiggly is like little doodled scribbles with little tiny flakes in them so if you uh, if you do this with embossing powder it looks like uh, sparkle and glitter 
and I'm going to go around with both colours but I'm going to do them separately as opposed to two colours on the on the stamp in one go I'll just turn it to its side so I can do it from the top look I love this love this it's just fabulous so I'm keeping the direction going the same all the way out all the way around so rather than turning my card rather than turning my card so that you've got the direction going in different areas it looks a bit odd I think it's better to keep it I think it's better to keep it all in one direction I love that love it it's funny you know but I mean I've designed hundreds and hundreds of stamps over the years and you always I always come back to old faithfuls if you like favorites because you can just you can it just especially when you bring a new collection of stamps out and then you bring an old one out and it just refreshes it just refreshes the look and I love that I love that stamps are permanent so we're going to we're going to over stamp with the stormy sky now yeah that's lovely that's so pretty that's so so pretty i'm going to bring that in to show you in a second that's fabulous i'm really happy with that remember you're only going to see the two out look at that that's just so pretty love that love it love it love it especially in two colors so I've, I've i've just picked out the same two colors so let's pop that so that's called sparkly squiggly it's a bit of a mouthful i know but how awesome is that stamp i'll make sure i'll make sure when i upload the video that i put a link in so I'm, i'll there'll be a link to everything in the um in the description let me just pop that on top so you can see what that oh that's just look at that they're just gorgeous together so I'll leave them there to dry so because i've spent all that time doing that lovely uh, letterpress technique background i'm not going to use any other stamps apart from the sentiment and the sparkly squiggly that we've just done so I'm going to do a banner sentiment and these are, and I honestly don't know if we've got any of these left at the point I'm recording this video because we had a mad rush on them the last time I used them and I'm using, so I honestly, I honestly genuinely don't know how many of these are left and they're just beautiful. I wish I'd done more in this collection but I did only do the two sets. So these are the Elegant Brush Script uh, Border Sentiments, which is what I'm using today. And these are the ones that have, on the capitals, look, you have a double swish. You have a double swish on the capitals. And it just looks really, really pretty. And you've got two, as I say, you've only got two, uh, two sets in this collection. And if I'm right, to, today I'm recording this, but I do believe that we will have our black friday event on when this video is published so the video will be published on saturday morning the 26th of november and i do believe our black friday event starts from the 24th until the 27th or the 28th so if you got both of these you're going to save 20 percent, i think so you've got the border sentiments and then you've got the essential sentiments which is the um the regular way of doing them but i'm using the border today and i'm going to do two tone and because i'm stamping with oh there's so many choices so sending happy birthday wishes with lots of love on your special day have a truly fabulous day oh i love that oh i might use that one enjoy every precious moment love that have the best birthday ever. I love that as well. I love them all. Uh, send, in a, send in a little note to say, oh, that's so much better than just a note. And then the bottom one says, with love and best wishes. I'm going to 
I'm going to use Have a Truly Fabulous Day. Because I think that is just when I want you all to have a truly fabulous day. So the reason I'm using the stamping platform is because I'm going to be stamping with the Distress Oxide. And Distress Oxide, as, as I've already said loads of times, are a water-based ink. So you might need to go in twice to get a decent impression. I'm just trying to get that central. I think that looks central enough to me. And I'm going to do a two-tone again. I'm going, to, oh, I'm going to do, let's just start that again. I'm going to do a two-tone again. It's because the magnets were too close together. But this time I'm going to stamp in the Kitsch Flamingo first because it's the lightest colour. Have a truly fabulous day. So I'm going to stamp in the Kitsch Flamingo first and then just cherry pick areas with the stormy sky. How long have I been? I am not doing bad. So Kitsch Flamingo, gorgeous pink, definitely worth having in your stash. I mean, that just looks amazing. <laughs> Look at that. Have a truly fabulous day. I love that. Absolutely love that. And I'm not going to take the ink off. I'm going to leave it on. And hopefully that didn't move when I was doing this. And I'm just going to do a couple of little areas with the, with the stormy sky to go over the top. Just so we continue that two-tone. Wow. How gorgeous is that? <laughs> Do you know what? Even after, I mean, I've been crafting for donkey's years, as you know, but I, I love it when you see things like this. This is why we're crafters, because you can't, you can't buy things like that. That just looks amazing. Amazing. Love it. I'm easily pleased. Can you tell? <laughs> Pop the stamp back where it belongs. That was my chair, by the way. So I have a truly fabulous day. Love it. And it can be anything, that, can't it? It can just be to tell somebody to have a fabulous day. It could be for a wedding card. It could be for an anniversary card. It could be for anything, birthdays, whatever you want. Right, so we've now got that going on. We're going to start sticking this card together and then come to the flowers last. So this is going to go on flat. So just with glue. And don't you panic if you're wondering where the glitter is. We'll get to it, don't you worry. So this is going on flat. Make sure I've got the stamp in the right direction. So I'm leaving the white space around that because that will be glittered. And this one is going on foam tape and let's see whether I've got decent -ish foam tape or not. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. So get these scissors out, Phil. I'm not very patient and most of you know that I'm so used to being able to tear my foam tape but I just cannot get hold of any terrible I can't get hold of any of the terrible foam tape just yet I promise you as soon as I can I will let you know it just saves time so let's get this layered up all these colours gorgeous together. Kitsch Flamingo, Stormy Sky. So I thought when I was when I was getting ready for this uh, video, I was just going to do a quick video and show you the techniques. But you want to see what they look like in situ in, in a card. 
which is why I'm making the effort just to put this in a card. So this card shape, the card size is seven and a half square, just in case anybody's wondering. So it's it's not the biggest card I've done and it's certainly not too small. So we've got that there. The embossed piece is going on foam tape as well because it's going to be glittered. So I'll just get that on with some foam. Oh, wrong one, Phil. Nobody told me. That is my least, in fact, I'm gonna take that off because I hate that stuff. I'd sooner, I'd sooner just take that off and use the other stuff. Let's just get this layered up. So this is actually a really quick and easy card to make. So you you could lit you could absolutely just have a day, have a day where you do lots of letter pressed backgrounds. Um, that's not going to work, is it, Phil? Just get another roll of foam tape. Yeah, so you could have a day where you do lots of letterpress backgrounds. And then just make all the cards up. So it's it's quicker, really. If you were making cards to sell, which I know some people do, um, you, could, you could batch make these quite easily. Remember, if you're using oxides, to give them time to dry. To give them time to dry. So you don't transfer the ink everywhere. Here we go. And then we'll come to the flowers and see whether the flowers have dried or not. They might just need a quick blast with the heat gun. Standing up to do my matting and layering. Oh, that's just so lovely. Just get that in the middle. Come on, Phil. That looks more or less the middle to me. That's just so, so pretty, look. So we're going to break up this colour now with some Diamond Dazzle. Just get a drink. How long have I been? <gasps> Look at that, it's only just over an hour. For anybody that doesn't know, that's really good. <laughs> so the only reason I'm doing the glittering now, because I do usually do it at the end, as you know, is because I'm just trying to leave the flowers a little bit longer the longer I can leave the flowers, the better. Because that enables the ink to settle into the debossed areas of the flower dyes. Instead of blowing it around with the heat gun. So just gluing all the way around the edges. And I'm doing the edge of the embossed piece as well so that it it brings it to the foreground. The glitter will give it lots of sparkle and bring it to the front. And you know, I always tell you, because my, I mean, I've been using this, this, you can see how long I've been using this, look at the state of it. But I've, I've been using this pot for about two and a half years and I just keep refilling it. So I just refill it from the 500 mil ones and the 500 mil pots are too big to use for crafting. But then I, we did these so that you can keep topping up your smaller pots and it's more cost effective. It works out cheaper, um, works out cheaper to buy the 500 and one, 120 and then just keep filling it up. Look how good I am, eh? And it's just, like I say, I've been using this for about two and a half, it might even be ne nearly three years. And because that glue is thicker, my PVA is thicker than normal PVA, less water content, which is what I absolutely wanted when I was sourcing it. 
So less water content means less chance of it buckling your cardstock. Because there is one thing that I cannot stand. And that is cardstock that buckles with glue. I can't bear it on my cards. You spend all that time making a fabulous project. And then glue it together and it all buckles. Well I don't want that. I don't want that for myself and I don't want it for you. So I know that this glue won't do that and you don't need a lot either so if you're just sticking layers together you don't need to put bucket loads of glue on so it's cost effective I think that looks really rather beautiful so wait till we've got the rest of this card put together let's just put the glitter back there and move that for a second how fabulous is that so we've, we've actually got lots of texture on there and all we've used up to now is an embossing folder and a background stamp. So let's come back to the flowers. Oh, these are gorgeous. Aren't they just beautiful? They're not 100% dry yet, so we're gonna give them a quick blast. Just because in emergency services. Just because I want to make sure these are proper dry before I start shaping them. And you can see this one here is still wet on the edge. And do you see how the colour scheme is coming together, look? You could do this any colours. If you don't like Kitch Flabbing going stormy sky, you could do this in your own favourite colours. Oh, just got to plug the heat gun in again. We are getting somewhere. We are nearly done. And then I'll do a little recap for you at the end. So I'm just going to give these a quick blast. I'm just going to give these a quick blast just to dry them. You don't need to do this a lot. And I would normally, as you know, leave these to dry naturally. Yeah, so by allowing them to sit as long as we can, the ink has gone. The ink has gone down, it's sunk down into the cardstock as opposed to with blowing it all over the place when we're still wet through. Look at that there, how pretty is that? Oops, where are we? Come on camera, focus on the flower. There we go. Almost done. Last couple. Had we have done this with, I know I keep banging on about Kitch Flamingo, but had we have done this with Spun Sugar, we would have lost most of that pink because Spun Sugar is just too pale. Right, well, foam mat. That is just out of reach, of course it is. It's just out of reach. I just need to get my shaping tool. And we 
I'll get these flowers put together. So let's get these done in the right order. So I'm just I'm just going to shape these the way I normally do, just by pushing down at the edges. And I know that they're all double except for four of the smallest ones. So I'll stick these together as I go. I love this flower. Love the shabby blooms. I love all the shabby flower dyes. So put that one there. This is going to be a doubler. I'll try and do this quick for you because you don't want to watch me doing I didn't want to do the flowers ahead of time like I do normally because I wanted to show you how to use the two inks together because I've not done it for a while. Just move that around a bit. There we go. These these all these remind me a little bit of carnations when they're stuck together. It wasn't the intention when I designed them. It's just a, a bonus. <laughs> and I don't know whether you can remember, but when, when I first released these, and I told you we, when I first released these, I explained to you that we got the, I put the extra cut, so the little cut line, the little cut line there, look, goes further down. And what that means is when you're shaping, it's just done it there, look. When you're shaping these up, instead of having one one petal that looks dodgy, they actually overlap naturally. And it just, it looks really, it looks really good. Attention to detail, darlings. Attention to detail. So just one more that's doubled up and then the rest are singles. And then we can start to put this card together. So shape, 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 shape. So these four at the top will be singles. What's that? A bit of glue. Nearly done. And then we can get this card put together. I've just got to put the gems in. which will take a second. So literally I've shown you four different techniques with the letterpress technique. So four different effects you can get. And I haven't even scratched the surface because if you're, if you're happy with the texture, with the distress oxides like I am, I love that. What we could have done, I'm, I'll probably I'll save it for a new another video. I'll save it for a new video, but you can start to drop ink on them. So, you, for example, you can get your uh, oxide sprays. So you can get your oxide sprays and drop the color on, and you can get some really heavy, colorful backgrounds uh, in in either in either direction. So embossed or debossed. The possibilities are just endless. And the only thing I won't show you is with a dye based ink pad because I'm not going to stain my folders. I could do because I've, I have actually got two of each, but <laughs> I'm not. So gems, I'm just using the ice diamond gems because I don't want any more color. The color is coming from the the colour is coming from the inks, so I'll just pop the gems in. Remember not to push them down with your wax tip. Just put them in position and then push them down with your tweezers. Otherwise you'll snap the wax tip. Nearly done. I think this might be one of the quickest demos. I'm not finished yet, right enough. But I've done this one for you 
on YouTube. So this is the only place you can see this video. It won't be on my Facebook page. And I've done this because I knew I was away this weekend. So I couldn't do a live for you. And that's, that's shocking because that's two weekends in a row I've not been able to do a live for you. But I am actually away this weekend, so I couldn't do it. So you've got this fabulous video instead. See, I still think about it even when I'm not here. So I'm just pushing the gems in and poking the petals up, which is what I always tell you to do. So we've got lovely dimension from these flowers. We've got the gorgeous two-tone colour from the Stormy Sky and the Kitsch Flamingo. And I love it where we've got little white patches. It looks fabulous. So I'm not putting any glitter on those. What I am going to put glitter on is my butterflies. I'm just looking for my pointy tweezers, but I've not got any on the desk. So it's just hold them in the center and just shape the wings back. And I'm also going to glitter the leaves. So this is the shabby foliage I've got here. Uh, and I am just going to shape the leaves back. Ooh, nearly did it on the wrong side. And as ever, my top tip for foliage is to only glitter the tips. Particularly if you're using my, my dyes. Because all my... All of my foliage dyes have the debossing detail. So why would you invest in having deboss detailing on your dyes to then just cover it all up with glitter? So I only glitter the tips of my foliage. So let's get this done. Let's get this done and then we are good to start assembling. So I'm just going to do the outer edges of the butterfly's wings. I'm going to do the little antennae. I'm not worried about how neat it is, I tell you that all the time. So pretty look. So easy to do and it looks fabulous. It actually looks like it's taken ages to do this background, this colour on the butterflies and the flowers and you saw how quick it was <laughs> a couple of distress oxides and you are good to go so i'm not glittering the flowers i'm leaving the flowers as they are but what i am going to do is just glitter the center of them around the gems because i don't want it words you never thought you'd hear me say i don't want it too sparkly and i like the color on the flowers so no point doing that if you're going to cover it all up nearly done literally just the tips of the foliage And then I'm going to go around the around the uh, center of these flowers. Remember the glue the glue dries clear, so it's only looking white because I've only just put it on, but it does dry transparent. So we're glittering around the gem in the middle. So just take care not to go over the gem too much. Otherwise, it will just look glittery and you won't see the sparkle from the gem. So nearly done. Nearly done. And then we've just got to assemble the card and then one more bit will have glitter on and that will be it so 
So let's just pop those to one side and start the assembly. So bringing the card in, we've got our beautiful sentiment here that is going to go across the middle. And the banner, the banner sentiments are really good for this. So we've, I'm going to shape this, yeah. And it's a really good way of breaking up the background. So you can see we've got, there's quite a lot going on there. But as soon as you separate the middle, the top and the bottom look with a sentiment, it, it just balances the whole thing. So I'm just going to give this a little point. In fact, I'm going to come in a bit further. So let's see where we're going to be with that. Take a bit off the end. That's spot on. So I'm just going to shave that along the edge of my desk just to give it a bit of a bend. And then I'm going to bring the other end back so we can have that flicking up. And then that will be pointed. So a little tip for you there, look. So I want my sentiment to go on like this. So we've got almost a proper banner shape. So it's flicked at the end, look. And then if you flatten that end, you could put that exactly where you need it to be. So I'm using the white glue for this as opposed to glue gel. Because it means I can get that stuck straight on. So that's just making sure that's the middle. So I'm going to get that in position first. And then get my sentiment the height I want it to be. So just hold that in position just till, it, till the glue grabs. Which it has now done. Oh that's lovely. So remember I said to you we've got glitter to put in one more place. And that is going to be on there. And I'm doing this now before I put the flowers on. Because it's easier. So I'm glittering all on the edge of this fabulous sentiment. And it really, re oops, it really, really looks pretty apart from that bit there where I've dripped the glue across. <laughs> so pretend we can't see that. There we go. Oh, that just, it just frames the whole thing and looks, looks beautiful. so pretty right here we go flowers are going on so most of you will know by now that i always put my flowers on with glue gel it's just so that i can reposition them and i like dimension from my flowers so dimension is added using the glue gel and of course the way that i've shaped the flowers so this focal one is going to go here look at the end so this is the largest one and this is why you put your sentiment on first and now I can position my flower perfectly let me just get a drink I knew I wouldn't finish it even though I started it before I started recording we are on the last legs so here we go so the flowers are going on first and then the foliage will be tucked in position come on naughty glue gel so let's start let's start here yep so i've not covered up the sentiment just a little touch at the end and then we'll move on to the next two flowers which are going at the sides so they're going here. Let 
I think I've got a dry bit of glue at the end of my syringe, at the end of the tube, because it's coming out stringy. So these are going in, and I'm just bringing them in a little bit so it's not a straight line. Yeah. And then we've got two smaller ones to go at the end. And then they're going over there. One, two, three. So what I'm going to do this time is pop the foliage on before I put the smallest, before I put the smallest flower on. So the the three you'll notice when you put the foliage on that I've got uh, from the shabby foliage. You ha you have uh, quite a few choices. So this has got three three leaves on. And then the other part that I've got is two leaves. So it's the first time I've done a set of, I'm going to show you. It's easier to show you instead of rabbiting on about different foliage. So I'm just trying to get those relatively even. Let me show you. I don't know whether we've got any of the shabby foliage left to be fair. So shabby foliage look gives you the left facing, right facing in five, a five leaf, th <coughs> sorry, three leaf, two leaf and in individual. <coughs> sorry, everybody. That's because I need a drink and I'm talking too much as usual. So last few bits. You see how this is all coming together, look, and it's all focused around that beautiful background, the heart and background done with the letterpress technique. So pretty. So let's just tuck the extra leaves in. And then I've just literally got to put the two butterflies on and the last three little flowers. So these two leaves are going there and there. Oh, that's really lovely. Some last flowers. Nearly done. Nearly done. And then I'll finish with the butterflies. So I always like to put a couple of extra flowers at the end of a, a banner look, just because it ties it all together. So we'll have, I'll have it there. We'll have two there. In fact, I'm gonna have all three there. Cause I can angle them there. And then last bit, the butterflies, everybody's like, yay. So we're gonna have one butterfly up here. And then I'm gonna have the other butterfly, oops, the other butterfly down there I think yeah I like it there and then the very last job is to just dot a couple of random gems because you know I like to do random gems I'm not going in the corners I just wipe this up because I can see a bit of glue gel there and if I get that greasy glue gel on my cards, I'll be most upset. So we're going to have a couple of just random gems dotted around. And these go on with the white glue. So let's have one there. One there. One there. 
Dante, you know when I said a couple of random gems? <laughs> I meant five. <laughs> or six, whatever it is I've got on there. But I do like the I do like the floaty gems just to bright just to break it all up. And it looks pretty. Remember, these are the ice diamond gems I've used here. And we are done. We are done and dusted. So lid on the glue fell. Put your syringe, your cocktail stick out of the way. And we will have a quick recap of what we've done today. And then I'll show you the card when it's all, when we've gone through the recap. So, we have done today the letterpress technique. And I can't wait to it. So the letterpress technique with the eight by eight embossing folders. So we've done, um, well, I can show you actually. So here we've got the letterpress technique with the embossing powder in the recessed or the debossed section of the embossing folder. And that was with the classic flourish. So that is your regular embossed piece. And that is the letter pressed embossing powder technique. We've then used the quintessentially quilted. So that is the debossed. And that is the embossed where we've used two different distress oxides. I use twisted citron and uncharted mariner. And we, so you can see, look, the embossed area of this piece of card is left white and the colour is actually in the recessed sections. And that was done with applying the ink direct to the embossing folder, which is what I wouldn't do, is what I tell you not to do. So this is why we've got more ink on the raised areas instead of doing it with the brayer. But it still looks fabulous. Then we have the quintessential, uh, no we haven't. Then we've got the double diamonds, which is one of my all time favorite embossing folders. And this is where we have colored the debossed side again. So that is your regular side. So that's the regular embossing. This is the debossed sections. So the reverse done in two tone distress oxides, which were carved pumpkin and fossilized amber. And I love them. And then the last one that we did was the card that we've done today, which is again in the recessed debossed side using Stormy Sky and Kitsch Flamingo Distress Oxides and done sparingly. So we've got some bits that are a little bit heavier and some bits that are a little bit paler, which is what I was trying to get. And that is another letterpress technique for you. So that is the card I've made today using the letterpress technique. Hopefully you've learned something. I think that looks really, really pretty. Especially with the sparkly squiggly in the background. It just looks gorgeous. It draws your eye into the centre. So hopefully you have learned something today and I've taught you something different uh, with the letterpress technique. So get your embossing folders out. Have a go. Uh, remember... If you like the, sh the shabby look, so the two-tone shabby look that I've got on here, use your Distress Oxides. If you want a more solid coverage, you need to use a dye-based ink, but it, like a Versafine Clair, but the Versafine Clair will stain your embossing folders. So forewarned is forearmed. And there you go, everybody. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. I've thoroughly enjoyed showing you something different. I love these little how-to videos. And although it's an hour, just over an hour and a half, it is quicker than my normal demos. <laughs> so a couple of little reminders for you. So if you haven't already, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, so obviously the channel is called Crafting with Phil Martin and Sentimentally Yours. So hit the subscribe button. And then once you've done that, hit the little notification bell. And then you will be notified every time I update uh, or upload any new any new videos. So that is the YouTube channel. If you are on Facebook, 
you can ask to join my Facebook group, which is the same name. So search on Facebook for Crafting with Phil Martin and Sentimentally Yours and ask to join my group. You do have to accept the rules before I let you in. Please also like and follow Sentimentally Yours on Facebook. So Sentimentally Yours obviously is my brand of fabulous, top of the line quality uh, craft products. So please search for Sentimentally Yours and follow the page. And also everything that I have used today, assuming I have stock, will be on the website, which is honeypotcrafts.co.uk. I have put links and everything uh, in the description for, for the video for you to get there quicker. But in, just in case you haven't got time for that, just, just find the website, honeypotcrafts.co.uk, and everything should be there. So one, two last things to tell you. So if you are on Twitter, you can give me a follow on Twitter. Just search for Phil M. Martin. And the same on Instagram. I'm also on Instagram, Phil M. Martin. So thank you very much, everybody. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that. I thoroughly enjoy showing you something different. And it's more about the technique than about the demo. Although I've got to say this card is just beautiful. So remember the uh, Elegance Brush Strip sentiments won't be there forever. So grab them quickly. So thank you, everybody. Have a lovely weekend or day, depending on when you're watching the video. And I will see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye.